So, welcome back. Hope you had a nice little snack while you were away. And we will have our next speaker up for the task, I hope. Uh, Jiri Jormakka from Kellu. And he'll have, hopefully, as amazing... Um, I lost the word. <laughs> Performance, maybe? Yes. <laughs> Performance. There are no words for this one. And I'm sure this will be amazing because I'm looking forward to this. I was looking forward for the first one, but now I'm very excited because we had one already and this is the second. And so we have a panel, but please go. <laughs> yeah, can you hear me and see my screen? Yes, we, should, we can yeah. see you in the little corner and yes. Well, yeah, uh, thanks for having me and hi, I'm Jiri and uh, uh, this is what I'm doing on daily basis. So uh, I'm into airship business and it's not that common thing in, in Finland or in Europe and uh, I think in, in uh, world there's not that much of, of colleagues of mine and uh, why I show this video is that uh, I met Milia first time during an interview that uh, we were just starting our journey with with Yoni uh, like I told I think it was two or three years ago if, if I remember right and uh, Basically, we were in a shed in the middle of nowhere. We had some kind of prototypes, yes. Uh, we basically didn't know that well what we were doing. We, we knew that uh, we want to do airships, but uh, we didn't know exactly what kind of uh, work we will be doing with the airships, who will pay money, to us for using the airships or are we selling the airships or whatsoever and uh, now as today we are on a situation that uh, uh, we are working in a real airship factory in Joensu uh, we are flying flying airships like this on daily basis and uh, uh, we can do quite long missions and uh, we can do stuff with the airships. And uh, today, this is a big day basically, I, I learned or got an agreement that uh, uh, real people are willing to pay real money uh, from photos talking uh, with that airship that flies over there. And uh, it, it felt pretty good that uh, we have actually created that one. And uh, we are taking, taking photos from power grid. It's really, really super boring thing to do, power grids. But uh, they are really important and uh, it's a really big business. And uh, it, it looks like that uh, we are uh, really on to something with this one and uh, I'm really proud of what what we have been doing what we have accomplished so far but uh, we are still really early on this one and few basic thing is when when I met Milia two three years ago there was only me and Joni but uh, now uh, we are working with uh, lots of European companies, a few US companies. Uh, our team is pretty international. We have uh, Finnish people, yes, but uh, we have one guy from New Zealand, uh, one from Hungary, and uh, we basically have uh, one one guy who's officially subcontractor, but. Uh, 
uh, we use him quite a much and he's from Germany and he's a real life German airship engineer and uh, I think it's fun and cool. But yeah, that, that's basically about Kellu and what I do on a daily basis. So, so we have been prototyping and are doing heavy product development for the past few, few years. And uh, on, on next month, we are going commercial. So we haven't been announcing it yet. Uh, the companies we are doing it with, uh, we will do the announcement when, when they feel that uh, they want to do it. And uh, it's a small uh, milestone for the population of the whole world, but uh, for me and my team, it's a pretty big milestone. And uh, basically, uh, I like Melia. <laughs> I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing in most of the cases. I, I haven't had a huge uh, plan that uh, or ambition that uh, I want to be a doctor, I want to be a pilot, or the the usual stuff. Mm, I'm pretty open-minded. Uh, I'm most of the time I'm pretty positive-minded. I'm, I'm I don't uh, I understand that uh, I'm not ready. Uh, I need to learn more and stuff like that. And uh, on those basic basic like. Uh, facts or principles or points of view or points of watching the world i've i've ended up uh in in your answer again to do airships and sell pictures on, on taken from airships and yeah on on that uh we we can move forward to the whole attitude thing here And yeah, once again, thanks for having me. And uh, Amelia's presentation was really good. Uh, uh, I had no idea about your history, what you have been through, and uh, what you have done. And uh, I kind of knew some something about your connection to Italy and uh, stuff like that. Uh, I I kind of have the same uh, thing for England, and uh, I'm I'm pretty well known in my friend circle that. Uh, uh, I really like England. It's, it's. Uh, I don't know why. I've always uh, uh, just felt that uh, uh, <laughs> I want to be there, and uh, I've been there quite many times. And uh, all every time when I uh, step on the holy ground of of England, I I almost cry. It's really weird. And uh, although the weather is shitty. Uh, I don't mind. But yeah, let's move forward. Uh, the whole attitude thing is, is that uh, uh, I understand that people think that I, I have attitude, that I, I can do stuff. And yeah, I'm, I'm more like a doer than a than, uh, book reader. But uh, I started to do this presentation or, or the whole thing uh in way that uh, what actually is attitude and uh i found it too boring to go uh to google and write that question down what is attitude what i did is that uh i wrote down 10 uh eight things that immediately came to my mind on on when i uh, thought the word attitude and uh, yes uh, uh, there's lots of sports there's lots of music but uh, on the next slide I, I think uh, there's much more behind those name names of bands or or uh, sports people Lassiviren or stuff like that but uh because num number one is lots of Viren. I'm not sure, Timo, how old were you when this actually happened? Can you remember that? Were you even born on that day when that happened?
Timo is not listening on this one. Uh, because of number one, number three, I will show you a video of the whole Lasse Viren thing. So maybe you have understanding what uh, what was my first impressions of the world uh, word attitude. So please enjoy. So did you see that one? Yes, but I think the sound didn't work, unfortunately. Ah, okay, yeah. Well, basically, Lasse fell down during the uh, uh, 10 kilometer run. It was lap 11, actually, and, and uh, he only had a few laps, uh, laps to go. And uh, he raised up from the ground and uh, he won the Olympic gold, gold medal. And uh, it, I, I think that was my first impression that uh, okay that guy had attitude to do uh the ultimate best he went there to do and there's uh, other examples uh, as well the uh ramones they really know how to play uh, rock and roll punk rock and that uh, they really did that well and uh the finnish cross, uh, cross country skiing uh, uh was it a trio they were called karpasi and uh, they ate mammy and uh, they they fucking uh, went to the Latu and uh, did the ultimate best they they could do. And uh, there's Elton John who who basically was just a nobody uh, and uh, uh, he conquered the whole whole music industry and stuff like that. This is really uh, uh, these all of these are really big names, uh, really big stuff. Uh, but uh, I think all of these are end results of something that you have already made before that that has led you to the end result. Even if you're Lasse Viren or Ramones or Braveheart or Elton John or, or Prince Philip. Uh, and uh, I, I try to think uh, what do they have in common? Every, every one of those or every other uh, people who, who, who I think they have attitude. And uh, uh, these are questions that I asked from myself. So uh, do they uh, really wait, know? Excuse me for a moment. Uh, you stopped sharing. We cannot see uh, your screen. Oh, uh, really? <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Let's try again. Are we all good now? Now we are all good again. Thank you. Yeah. So I started to ask questions that are do uh, uh, do they really understand what they are doing? Uh, do they really enjoy what they are doing? Are, are these two the big, uh, really big questions that are, do you need to understand and enjoy what you are doing uh, to succeed? Do, uh, do you need to have these to have attitude or, or to ha uh, get shit done, basically. And uh, are they focused on what, what they are doing 
uh, is that their passion what they are doing if if the passion is not running uh, can you do stuff like Lasse Viren did and uh, uh, I think uh, all of these uh, they are kind of humble uh, they they <clears throat> believe they understand that uh, they are on a journey they are not ready yet they uh, they understand what they are doing uh, they really like that one but they are not ready yet uh, if you think that you are ready uh, you cannot do that basically if Lasse Virian has fell down and uh, he told that uh, he's ready to win the Olympic medal uh, he would have blamed blamed somebody else that uh, uh, he pushed me over that uh, I would have won but uh, he pushed me but uh, he understood that uh, okay shit happens stuff happens I need to get up and win this race and uh, I think uh, to have that kind of attitude you need to understand the basic basic rules that are all things that are who are you am i doing the right right things am i enjoying what i'm doing uh, and uh, do i have the passion for this one uh, and uh, uh, if if you really are on, on the sweet spot that you do what you want to do you enjoy it you have the passion uh, you can have the good good amount of attitude to do it uh, although if something bad happens uh, and uh, by understanding that uh, you are not ready you are you are on a journey you are willing to learn more like Milia told that uh, she's she's really eager to learn more and uh, to get better on, on what she's doing although uh, she doesn't necessarily understand uh, what she's doing but uh, she's uh, on a journey uh, and uh, she wants to continue that one it feels good uh, she's not finished yet and uh, on, on my understanding uh, when you are on that journey uh, basically a bit by bit uh, you learn more you get more understanding uh, you you uh, get better you get better results uh, you have uh, some kind of a uh, thing that attracts people to you good stuff good people good press uh, it, it doesn't matter are they your employees are they your customers are they investors are, are they new friends are they uh, the president of of Italy who will uh, uh, give you the the uh, night uh, uh, title or stuff like that just happen when you are willing to understand that uh oh, okay i need to earn the uh end results i need to be humble and uh stuff like that uh, and uh if if i the video i showed earlier it's uh, uh if i just flow to random places Yes, it's possible to get uh, end results like that or end results like Melia has done. But uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, if, if you float to directions that you are willing to float, you are ready to float, you are, you are ready to open the doors and uh, uh, people will see that, uh, okay, this is for real, this person, and uh, uh, he or she is not faking. and. Uh, uh it it's uh eager to learn more and uh, it respects other people's opinions and uh, uh it's not ready yet the, then you have a cocktail that uh, uh can lead to a really good things for, for example if if what i'm really proud of and uh i, I i'm pretty sure that uh, it's not pure luck or or something like that is that uh, uh out from nowhere uh we created the factory we got uh high quality employees if we launch our recruitment info we can pick one person out from hundreds of of peoples around the globe uh we understand how to speak with the customers uh we, we uh basically we we can decide if if we want to create uh some kind of unicorn story or if if you want to do real business or or stuff like that 
And uh, one really big thing that, that I, uh, th this might be the biggest thing that uh, you, you need to be able to do to have positive attitude to accomplish stuff is that uh, uh, you can't be afraid of, of losing or, or you cannot be afraid of uh, failing or, or stuff like that. Uh, if, if I, for example, think, think about uh, most of the rock and roll bands or or for example, uh, Elton John, uh, he understood that, uh, okay, uh, I know um, how to play, uh, do songs, how to play music, uh, how, how to uh, play music, music uh, to a crowd. And uh, he basically had the uh, self-esteem uh, to do it and shut all the other noise uh from the background like you cannot do it or or get a real job that that's not the way to do do stuff but uh, he decided that uh, okay i'm i'm confident enough to do music and go to the stage and and play and uh he went all in uh, and uh it's it's going all in uh is is not uh small thing it's it's actually a really big thing and uh if if you go go all in uh you kind of want it to do it in relaxed way y you need to understand who are you and uh what what i'm doing right now what does the all in mean for example if uh, uh investor or me, for example, if I put all my money on, on one spot, uh, I will be afraid of losing the money. And uh, it will uh, end up in results that uh, I will panic, I will do lousy decisions, and uh, it will not uh, help the investment uh, to do better if I'm uh, afraid and tell them uh, that uh, you should do this and this and this. Uh, and uh, the, the freedom goes away from from that one and uh yeah like Mila told i believe that uh, uh you need to uh, be yourself uh, and uh it's really hard to be yourself in uh uh on daily basis and uh me for example i don't have uh working me or uh, not working me. It's a blessing, but it, it can be a curse that uh, I, I'm myself. If it doesn't matter if I do work or if I'm outside somewhere or, or stuff like that, I'm basically all in on the journey I've, I've chosen, and uh, that's not fine for everybody. Uh, I have had. Uh, some crap on my decisions but uh i know that uh, if i don't do this uh i will panic and uh it will end end up on on me doing lousy decisions and lousy jobs and basically what i'm trying to say here is that uh uh now just now i'm 33 i've I felt for the first time some kind of understanding who am I, what can I bring to the table, and uh, I can choose do I go that direction or that direction or that direction or that, and uh, I don't regret what I do. And uh, yeah, I've been asking the questions uh, because I, I want to understand. Do do I have the basis to have attitude in, in first place? 
I can't see you, so so I I don't un, uh, mm, see if if you have any kind of understanding what I'm trying to say here. But uh, I I kind of decided to answer these questions with you going through my history a bit not that much because uh we have li limited time but uh yeah i wanted to understand that uh, am i even asking the uh, right questions that uh all the uh successful uh, attitude persons uh have been asking themselves to have the attitude and uh basically i'm on a journey now i'm not ready and uh if if i go to my early years i only thing i did was was sports mostly ice hockey and uh, i i hang out with my friends but uh, all the friends were from the ice hockey or from the sports uh, i didn't care about my future i kind of thought that uh, okay may maybe i will go to nhl and uh, earn shit lots of money and uh, basically the ice hockey is the only thing i really understand how to do uh, i really like tennis and golf and stuff like that but uh, hockey was the number one thing and uh, i was really good at it and uh, i think that that might be a case that uh, was really dangerous that uh, i i thought or understood that i'm good at this uh, and uh uh i i got age i had girlfriends and uh, i had other lives than than ice hockey and uh suddenly when i was a teenager uh i realized that uh, i'm not going to nhl uh, i might go to uh some elite league but it's not nhl and uh it was basically in in one single day i i felt no passion for ice hockey anymore and uh i, I had no idea what to do i was pretty afraid to tell anybody about it that uh that uh uh Yeri is now a different person and uh it was pretty scary uh, the only thing I really liked to do was go. And uh, at the same time, all, all the friends changed. I went to a one group, uh, to a totally another group. And uh, I had no passion for school. Uh, I o only did the necessary uh, things to do that uh, made me to go from, from a grade to another. I really hate it when somebody asked me that uh, uh what kind of professional uh or career you want to have when you grow old and stuff like that uh it it, it was a pretty pretty lousy years but uh, there was lots of really good stuff also i'm really happy that uh, my uh, eyes opened i understood that uh, there's lots of new music good music i haven't ever heard i understood that uh uh, when I walk on the streets, there was uh, street arts. I understood that uh, there's lots of different stuff happening uh, around me that I wasn't aware of. I I started to feel different feelings, and uh, and uh, it it was uh, a change happened. But uh, I was scared because I had no plans, no nothing, and basically, yeah, I. I <laughs> smoked quite a much of, of weed on, on those days, yes. And uh, it, it wasn't maybe the best uh, ultimate solution to do. And uh, I, I got a massive panic disorder and uh, it, it went pretty rough. I wasn't, basically I stayed at home for one year. Uh, I was too afraid to co go to a shop. I, I didn't get anything done. Uh, I tried some some schools, but uh, they were too lame. I had no passion, and uh, I wasn't able to do anything. 
uh, it was really, really rough, but something changed on those years. And uh, when, when the early 20s, uh, I kind of understood that uh, uh, I got frustrated, basically. Uh, and uh, the frustration, the feel is, feeling of the frustration uh, launched a uh, series of, of happenings. And uh, well, one of the really big thing is that uh, I learned that I have panic disorder. Uh, I didn't want to go to doctor's appointments or anything like that because I didn't want to get any kind of mental uh, stamp, uh, lunatic stamp on, on my forehead. But uh, uh, when, I, when I went over there, or oh, actually I learned it from, from other roots that I have panic disorder, everything opened up. Uh, it, it was a really big thing for me. And uh, uh, I, I kind of understood that, uh, okay, it's just panic. I'm not dying or anything. And uh, on that time, I, I understood that uh, the world is open again. And uh, it, it felt really good. Uh, and uh, I, I went to, uh, I got a job. I went to a, a city market to sell mobile subscriptions. And, and uh, I had no any kind of like uh, experience on sales or whatsoever. But uh, I thought that uh, why not? And uh, since day one, uh, it felt really good. Uh, and uh, I've, I've been doing sales in di different uh, ways after that. And uh, when I was on sales, I started at Sonera, then I went to Giganti, and uh, I had the need to get better. I, want, I really had big plans, and uh, I told to my supervisors that uh, uh, basically I want to come to your shoes. So, so I, I want to uh, proceed on, on this career path. I, I want to be the big shot. It doesn't matter or didn't matter on what company it, it uh, was, but uh, I decided that, uh, fuck, this is something I really want to do. And I want to get better on this one. And I understood that I need to have a degree uh, to have a good position in, in work life. And uh, uh, as I didn't have any, any kind of uh, background in, in my school career, I didn't have any uh or Amatikolo uh, degrees. Uh, I went to uh is it vocational school Oppisopimus and uh, told to the uh, students over there that uh, okay this is the plan. Uh, I will show you in, in less than a year that uh, I know all, all the stuff I can do stuff that uh, I will get my second degrees uh, done. And uh, from that day, it took me six, took me six months uh, to get the second uh, ammattikoulu tutkinto from, from uh, Tampere. And uh, yeah, I worked at the same time and uh, I went to a uh, University of Applied Sciences uh, application day and uh, I did the application, the studies, the test and stuff like that and uh, I got in. So basically I, uh, I understood that uh, I need to have a degree and it only took me uh, six to nine months to get from nowhere to a student in, in University of Applied Sciences. And yeah, when I was uh, still studying, I, I was working at the same time in Giganti. I, I, immediately understood that uh, uh, this is not enough for me. Uh, if if uh, Giganti or any other place can succeed in do sales, they are selling and people are buying. How hard can it be? Uh, I can do it uh, by myself. And uh, basically, uh, I, I've always been uh, open, positive-minded, uh, creative thinker. And uh, I created my, or I got an idea 
to uh, to a software, and uh, it it was when I was 23 or 24, and basically after that I've been an entrepreneur on the startup scene. So I founded a software company without any any software knowledge or basic understanding about how to create uh, uh, create softwares or how to how to uh, set up a company or how to create a, a big startup or, or stuff like that. But um, how hard can it be? I got funded, I hired staff and uh, yeah, th things went forward pretty well. I got clients, it was in youth ice hockey and uh, quite quite uh, early days when we founded up the company, we got really big clients like uh, uh, TPS and Ilves and Tappara and Kärpät and Jokeri and basically all of the biggest clients uh, you can have in Finland. But there was few basic principles that uh, I didn't uh, do. Uh, I, uh, the market was way too low and uh, uh, I didn't uh, understand that uh, I, I really need to sell solution the end result not the actual software that uh we we are doing and uh that was my first first company uh or first uh startup software company and uh we went bankrupt in after i'd say three to four years from from the beginning and uh after that, I, I started to ask the questions again that uh, who am I? What do I want to do? Uh, do I go to a, to a, some real company to, to do a real career? Or, or I had all the basic principles. Now I had the uh, education. I know how to do work. I know how to sell stuff. I know how, how companies work. I received quite many uh, job offers. Uh, I received uh, offers from other startups that uh, uh, come to work for us. And uh, you can have shares from our company and stuff like that. But uh, on those days, I, I understood that uh, I need to slow down a bit. I need to understand who am I, what I want to do, what can I bring to the table uh, and uh, now relax you are in no hurry at all uh, you still have the same ambition to do big stuff you still uh, have the uh, same same uh, light on your eyes that uh, uh, you know how to do stuff those didn't disappear during the bankruptcy and uh, yeah, I, I didn't do a panic reaction that uh, now I need to get a job, I need to do stuff, I, I need to go there and pay my bills and stuff like that. I handled my shit and uh, waited for a while and uh, I, I started to ask around me, people I, who knew me and who I knew that uh, do they have any kind of interesting cases or ideas or, or where I could fit if, if there's any kind of idea, I could uh, start to proceed to, to create a business out from, out from that idea. I start to feel some kind of inner peace with myself. And uh, it, it, when you feel that, you have the self-confidence to, to go all in to to a one or a few projects and uh, I was brave enough to open my mouth that I'm looking for something and uh, one thing led to another and uh, about three years ago I met Yoni uh, and uh, he told me <laughs> about airships and uh, uh, 
we get to know each other and, and uh, talk more about airships and our uh, business and uh, uh, then I, I remember the day when I told Joni that uh, I don't know, I understand that I don't know how to create multi-billion dollar or US uh, euro business out from airships now. I don't even know how to build an airship factory. I don't know how to sell solutions. I don't know how to hire a team of airship professionals. But uh, one thing I do know is that uh, I'm confident I'm the right guy who can find answers to those questions. And, and uh, it felt good. It, it really felt good. It, it uh, was a big moment for me. I, I kind of understood on, on that time that uh, I know something. I, I have a background to do stuff uh, and uh, on those bases I can have the attitude to launch and finish this process. And um, I'm not ready yet, not, not in, in, in any kind of way. Uh, I learn every day something new, but uh, it's fun. I've created the path I'm on. You cannot do it if, if you don't ask the big questions from yourself and, uh, and uh, open the door and go and do it. Uh, my clients are, are billion dollar companies, but uh, what they really like, why, why they like Kellu is that uh, w when they see me, when they have chats with me, uh, I, I'm not pretending any, anything. And, and uh, they can also let the work themselves out from the question and and uh, we are doing business from from person to person and uh i'm really proud that i'm i'm on a situation like that that i don't have to pretend to get shit done and i think that's good attitude and that's also the end of my presentation That was great. What I caught from that is like, you found yourself in a situation where you were in the little troubles and then you worked yourself through and learned from your experiences and tried and learned and tried and learned and keep going all the time forward. And that is oh, so good. Well, yeah, there's a. Uh, I'm not the smartest person on the world. I, I can say that. And uh, I've had lots of like multiple years of. Uh, I, I have mentors and uh, I have an advisory board who whose job is to try and make me understand stuff. And uh, it's a long process, but I'm getting there. <laughs> that is so great. You know what you need and you acquire the needed things, even their mentors or airships or something. And that's amazing. Um, mm. Is there any questions people have? Any kind of questions? Uh, Timo, your microphone is off. 
I think now it's on. Yes. <clears throat> I'm proud to be one of those people who have worked with with, with uh, Yeri during the years. One thing is what I'm proud of you is that you are like media. You are a real person. Mm. It, it can be any situation anywhere in the world. It can be slush, it can be anywhere in the world. And I can throw you like into the lions and you are still there with yourself. Your self esteem is really, really, really good. And I, what, what, what I like it within you that you are always proud of those things that you are selling. Your attitude is like, because I like like that. If, if, if you are selling something, you have to be proud of that product. Mm. It can be anything, but you have to be proud of that. You have to get those shirt on, you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I do have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that, that's something that I'm, I'm, I'm really, really keen on you that it, it's like, it, you're always like, you always are saying that, okay, give me something concrete. That I want to do something, you know, there has to be a goal. I want to go somewhere, give me something. And you always like, it, it, it's the same in sports, of course, that you have a goal that you have to achieve. That's my, my, that's my comment that you have to sell this team. And I, I wrote there as, uh, as well that the changes in life and the proudness and the sales and the uh, changes of everything I'm, I'm so proud of you guy you're like one of my heroes you know <laughs> I, I, I can say that in the uh, proudest of my heart you're the one that keep the keep the, keep the world changing yeah, yeah that's all right. I like to say thank you thank you for being you and being being the think thinking uh uh being the real you know Mm. Just go with the flow, guy. I, I love you. That's all I want to say. Good stuff, Timo. Yeah. Yes. Nico, you raised your hand. Do you have something to say? Yeah, I think, uh, Yiri, I think I met you for the first time in 2015. It might have been. I think you were working in Havosport at the time. Mm. And uh, my question was actually, because I think I actually met you in my early 20s, mm. and I kind of wanted to ask that uh, now that you've gone through some of the adventures that you just listed, um, what would you tell yourself when you were like 20, 21 or 23, seeing as those are the uh, people who will hopefully see this broadcast later on as well? Well, now I, I would say... that uh, look behind the curtain of, of the whole startup like glamour or glitter or understand what really happens why uh, people succeed or companies succeed because the principles or, or the stuff they are doing they are really simple and uh, anybody can anybody can do them uh, i haven't succeed in in uh, anything yet but uh, I'm, I'm pretty confident that uh, i'm on the right track but uh i could have had it earlier if if i would understand more what what really makes process like how to do sales and stuff don't say you haven't succeed <laughs> you have well yeah it's it's how you measure it yeah i have, I have to say that i just talk a half hour ago a pretty good friend of mine who has made a plus 10 exits in millions but he has worked really much and he has been also one of the guys who is believing in 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 Yiri uh, and Yiri knows who the guy guy he is mm -hmm. uh, but the thing is that in attitudes you always trust on something 
and in, in companies, in sales, is all about the trust. It's mm. all about the trust. If you want to get funding, you have to be a trusted person who is sitting there or talking to the investors or talking to the clients or in sales. It's all about the trust. And if you don't think this person who, who is, who is, uh, has has the, has the money he invests in in first of of Yiddish companies and the first one didn't succeed but still the same guy invest in his second company for some reason and that's mm. because of Yiri that's because of Yiri of course of Yoni but still mm. I believe that Yiri is the guy who will make it someday that we will read the news like at the Today he made this or this. So I I, I, I believe in in sales and attitudes. It's all about the trust. Do I trust this guy? Is it like sometimes someone who I want to go with to have a coffee or something? You know, do I trust this person? And if he or she isn't real, I don't want to eat with her in Kerop and get some lunch like me and Melia died like. Or, or me and Yiri have coffee sometimes. So it's all about the team, all about the trust, all about the, how, who you are. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So keep it real. Is there still questions you would like to ask from Yiri about Gellu or about um, attitude or about his life? Because we have time for that. Uh, excuse me. Yeah, can I say something? Can I talk? Yes, of course. Yeah. Um, Yuri, this is uh, such a fantastic um, well trajectory of your career. It's impressive. And um, you mentioned one thing. You said uh, you had mentors mm. who kind of helped you along the way. Are those mentors available for people who are not Finns? Because I think that's a big problem that a lot of um, uh, migrants have. And I had this conversation with Nico about it, and I was mm -hmm. asking if possibly the society can actually act as mentors of some sort for migrants, particularly, you know, trying to start something. Yeah, really good question, and uh, uh, I have done it in a way that uh, I haven't asked politely, basically, can you be my mentor? I, I go and ask that uh, help me, or, or can you help me, and or you are smart, uh, help me on this one, and uh, it has created uh, some kind of a snowball, and uh, yeah, now, now I'm on a situation that uh, I have lots of phone numbers on, on my phone to who to call if I have some problems. But uh, as, as a girl, uh, I also have a, a real advisory board. There's the, uh, the whole technical leader of VR, Valtio Rautatiet, VR. Uh, one really big leader from ST1, uh, product development manager of ABB, and uh, one European uh, startup attorney. And uh, I'm paying for the services to be, be on the advisory board. And uh, we have a meeting, formal meeting, lasting three hours once a month. And uh, every two years, I have a phone call with one of them. Not all, just one. But uh, you will be surprised how much people understand around you if you just pick up your phone and call and ask. Okay, um, I kind of sent a business idea to mm -hmm. Kalitus Patnarit, made up of 100 people, and not mm -hmm. one person called back. So that is me actually just going out to ask if someone will be a mentor or if someone could help out and well, i can try and help you on that one if, if you can 
I, I think we can sort that out in some way. <laughs> I promise you at least one contact if we do it together. All right. Thank you. Uh, I can actually tell you the official places whose job is to, to reply to you. So if, if you can uh, send me an email, I will put it to a chat. Thank you. Yeah, of course. That's a funny this thing is... in Finland that we are sometimes we we kind of know that we need help, but we don't ask for help. We kind of think that it's ashamed to ask for help. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know why, but for some reason we know that Yiri is like the perfect guy. But I. Uh, so that no, 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 no. I, you know, so my advice is that always you can ask for help for people like Yiri or like Milia or like Nico or, or any anyone. Just ask for help. Ask for advice. Yeah, so, and actually, there's one story that I, it's it's re related to attitude. The one of the billionaires in Finland, Mika Antonen, owner owner of ST One. I wanted to get to him to have a chat with him, so I decided to call him three times a day, uh, 7:45 on lunch break, 11:30 and 4:15 uh, p.m. every day, as long uh, so many times that he answers my phone call. And uh, I started on Monday and Thursday morning, 7:45 he answered, and uh, I got a meeting. So. Just do it, is basically the... Yeah, um, and the reason, the reason for the 7.45 is that they are not in a meeting. They are, yeah, meetings start at the car, to, you know, they are going, driving to, to, to work, or they are having their first drinks of coffee. So 7.45 is perfect. And always yeah. do it like, you have a dream that I want to do this. But you have to do this, not just wait. But okay, I send an email and then I hope that he or she will answer. No, 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 no. You have to have the attitude that to do it, you know? Mm -hmm. okay, like we have heard today from Milia or Yiri. You have to do it. You have to what you 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 have have to be the courage to do it and you have to do it. So that's mm -hmm. my message. You have, just do it. Mm -hmm. For this slot, uh, we could keep a little break and continue on 8.15. And after that, we'll have our panel, uh, more, more talking about attitude, more talking about importance of trying and more talking with these amazing people we have here. So we'll be back at 2015. And remember to drink water. <laughs>